Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Jack White called Boarding House Reach. So here's something kind of paradoxical I've noticed with Jack White. For as much as his presence and influence seems to loom over so much of modern rock music, especially the bluesier side, I don't think I think about him that much these days. You'd think I would, given his work with the White Stripes, the Raconteurs, or even Solo. But for as much as I really liked Blunderbuss, there was a certain distance I still have towards Lazaretto even four years later that is despite quite liking it a fair bit. And this is coming from somebody who has seen Jack White live in concert and who generally likes his southern gothic jagged almost hermetic approach to his sound, spiraling down to the twisted rabbit holes that might stumble towards a lot of blues rock lyrical cliches but nearly always had the tunes and the hooks in order to back it up. But here's the thing, not counting that overstuffed release of B-sides two years ago, this is the first proper Jack White record in four years, and I was genuinely curious how it would stick out in comparison to so many other artists trying to chase some brand of that sound, or help even outright surpass it in the vein of acts like Ron Gallo or Kyle Kraft. And I'll admit a certain amount of concern about this one. I won't deny that it was likely a natural step for Jack White to step away from conventional blues rock in favor of a more diverse or eclectic sound, but he's never been a great lyricist per se, and if he was refocusing there at the expense of his riffs, even reportedly a rap-inspired song on this project, yeah, I had some room to worry here. But our Alright, what the hell? How was Boarding House Reach? Oh boy, this was not really what I was expecting. Hell, even going off the lead-off singles, I don't think anybody was expecting Jack White to make this sort of left turn, throwing out a great deal of the garage rock riffing and analog grit for keyboards, swamped out bass lines, and pickups that seemed too clean by half. Much has already been made by certain members of the music press that this was the record that Jack White embraced Pro Tools instead of his traditional record methodology, but I'd argue it's closer to to a mishmash of an approach, and for the first six or seven listens, it was one I could not stand. Seriously, the more listens I gave this project, the less I thought I liked it, until I started to get the feeling that Boarding House Reach wasn't exactly intended to be taken completely seriously or straightforward. And once I understood that, um, I still didn't quite like it all that much. I mean, it's decent for sure, it's got its moments, but not only can I predict this to be one of Jack White's most polarizing albums, it'll also likely be the least liked by a lot of longtime fans, which is kind of a shame because there is a part of me that hears him maybe actually having some fun making this album this time around. It is kind of interesting to think about, even if it isn't all that likable. And here's the thing. I'd argue that, for the first time, the key to really getting this record comes in the songwriting and the lyrics. Yes, I'm referring to those absurd, seemingly out-of-nowhere spoken word digressions that seem to utterly kill this record's haphazard sense of momentum, but you don't stay with me on this, I have a point. Note, despite the pompous language on Abulia and Acrasia, the two words of the title reflect a lack of proper motivation and seemingly acting against one's best interest, which seems to show at least some self-aware acknowledgement that Jack White going against his well-trod sound could be a bad thing for him, but those are very constructed notions. And if Jack White is looking to do anything with this self-referential album, it is to burn those system-reinforced notions to the ground. Sometimes it's more abstract, like the questions around domestication, around why walk a dog that can clearly parallel a constrained artist within a system. Sometimes it gets more blatant than the massively sarcastic corporation. And sometimes it's so thuddingly obvious, like the sole concession to his traditional brand of hard rock like over and over and over. A leftover song from his raconteur days that's now recontextualized to the Sisyphean hell of repeating the same artistic path and rock music over and over again. And this also provides an inroad to how Jack White writes about women on this album like on Respect Mander, where I normally have had a problem with him, or rather the one solitary woman to whom he scratches a direct parallel with God and his muse as early as the pseudo-rap flows of Ice Station Zebra, excusing his genre-bending and mold-breaking as being driven from the same creative source as any other. And from there, the next few spoken word passages, they make all the more sense. From the system degeneration on both parts of everything you've ever learned, to the unsettled, uncharted territories of the introduction of Get in the Mineshaft, to Esmeralda Steals the Show, that's just your expected screen 
screen against technology that you would expect coming from Jack White. But you know what? It fits the sort of tired exasperation that has him planning to shoot himself in the head on what's done is done. Where backing vocalist and country artist in her own right, Esther Rose, ends the track on the note that if Jack White chooses to off himself, she'll still stick around. She'll remain. Although it gets kind of intriguing that he then chooses to end the album on Humoresque. A relatively conventional piano and acoustic love song that's genuinely pretty and was written by the legendary gangster Al Capone. A composition that Jack White bought at auction and then reinforces his theme of how said muses message that woman in his stories, that message can go along to anybody. But you know what? For as much as I admire the loose candor and refreshing, self-effacing bluntness to which Jack White brings to the writing thematically, it's hard to shake the feeling that the jokes and some of the candor that we get, they really aren't all that funny. And this is where we actually have to talk about the execution in these lyrics. I mean, Jack White's always had a certain overwritten style of prose that reminds me less of the great singer-songwriters, or even somebody like Nick Cave from Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, to which some of this writing feels oddly reminiscent, specifically to the early to mid-2000s years for Nick Cave, but rather, for Jack White, it seems like someone who's trying way too hard to sound oblique or pretentious or portentous or literary, and this is not helped by his vocal delivery, which has this jittery intensity that sadly doesn't lend itself all that well to this sort of self-aware content, especially when he decides to rap. I'm not denying the manic writing can feel kind of well constructed, but it lacks the organic ease or any desire to pull the audience in on the joke. There's no real sense of populism, which is one of the big reasons this album feels as alienating as it can without greater context. And at some points, you're just waiting for the punchline that never really comes, like on a hyper misophoniac, a gimmick of a song comprised from annoying fragments, sampled some from children's toys that Jack White claims this is his attempt to create beauty, but just falls painfully short. Not helped by a lyrical cadence that's a lot more reminiscent of Rob Cantor's song, Actual Cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Of course, the larger problem with this, it comes in the production. And look, while I was exceedingly skeptical of Jack White deciding to pivot into synth-infused funk rock from his foundation of grinding garage-inspired blues, you know what? In theory, with the right production or edge, this could have worked. He's a good enough composer, but it's the execution that really blows up in Jack Jack White's face, and yes, the biggest issues, they come here on production. Now, for one, this is a record that chooses to place most of its melody lines in the synthesizers or the keyboards and organ in comparison with the actual guitars, but places a lot more emphasis on the groove and the bass line and percussion overall, which fine, not my preferred choice if it compromises the melodic hooks that have always been Jack White's hallmark, but with less traditional song structures like this album, it could connect, but it also seems like there was little to no significant effort in blending and mastering these tones effectively to work with each other. Percussion and the grooves, they typically carried the most texture, then the vocal line if Jack White used a more lo-fi pickup, but the rest of the texture, it's all over the place. Something that good tape-to-tape -tape mixing would organically blend well, but with the usage of cleaner Pro Tools and sampling leaves chunks isolating, clashing with the mix. Sometimes it's not bad. Typically, the guitar and Hammond organ develop some sizzle and ride the bass groove like the solo on Connected by Love or Respect Commander, but that assumes the leaden guitar pickups built to any sort of defined melody that can match the groove, or the oily, gurgling synth will blend with anything at all. And none of this is helped by the backing vocals that often feel way too clean, with the most glaring example being over and over and over, and what's done is done. And when the latter is matched with the synth warble, it almost sounds like it was inspired by what Justin Timberlake tried and mostly failed on Man of the Woods, or take Get in the Mineshaft. Yes, the futuristic synth funk touches, they aren't bad, but it all feels way too clean and meandering and put me in the mind of an artist like Neon Indian who could pull this off much more effectively. And that's the other thing. For as much as Jack White is pushing this as a stylistic revolution for him, well, it might be for him, but the 70s were littered with rock acts who made a push for groove and synthetic driven sound, especially in the late 70s, sometimes even nowadays when they try to bring back that that sound, and let's be honest, the mixing often felt a lot better, and this isn't quite as original as Jack White thinks it is. Of course, there's also the very real possibility that Jack White left in those glaring, misshapen edges intentionally, to spur on that alienated reaction from the fans as he jumps around. And I'm not gonna deny that along the way, he's an interesting enough musician to pull in some fascinating fragments, and occasionally some solid, textured, synth, funk, blues, rock combinations. But if this is Jack White's self-described I don't care record, I don't see how I can recommend 
recommend to anyone who doesn't have the patience for this bland and pretentious, half ironic immolation of his entrenched sound, especially when it comes at the expense of solid individual songs. Now, for me, there was enough to save it in terms of groove and good ideas, netting an extremely light 6 out of 10, but man alive, it is not for everybody and might prove to be Jack White's most challenging listen to date. I mean, check it out if you're curious, but if you walk away unsatisfied, hell, I think even Jack White could have warned you with this album, so keep that in mind. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. You'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. My throat is really sore right now, so if you wonder why I sound so hoarse, that's why. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys want to get involved in supporting this channel or maybe impacting my schedule, link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule. And once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. Want to see a schedule? It's on my Instagram below. And I got the poll up there for all you guys to tell me how wrong I am. You want to buy the record? Also in the description. But till next time, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.